I do. Yeah. I'll speak good. as well. Do speak. Go ahead. I speak to it now. Thank Your you. Eight minutes and maximum. Uh, just to we welcome uh, the Minister to the House and well done to Senator Warfield to act on this. It's something that we've all been aware of for a while. I think since the downturn as well in the last decades or so that we call them since 2007-08 where families have had to move back in together, uh, the children have, back, have back, moved back in or else they go and find, try and find rental accommodation that has become increasingly scarcer and scarcer in our cities, uh, especially and especially on the, the east coast where it's out of most young people's reach. Um, 2017, so two years ago, while we've been aware of the problem of substandard accommodation, and I have to, I suppose, uh, look back and say Rathmines at that stage was the kind of bedsit haven, and to an extent it still is, of all the country people coming up for a job in Dublin, and the accommodation there in that bedsit haven was uh, dubious to say the least, but we've come a long way. Uh, we, we have come in hygiene standards, personal space, healthy living, healthy homes, but uh, our expectations are so much more than uh, just putting up with what is on offer. But we're, we have gone back to those almost slum circumstances in some cases um, that Dublin was prolific and known throughout the world as the slum capital of Europe uh, in the early 1900s. And in some cases, especially in the RT investigates in 2017, two years ago, we saw that again. It was um, unfortunately, but it was the three uh, houses investigated in that programme uh, were in my constituency, my neighbourhood, Crumlin. There was 64 people living in a, a house, uh, shoehorned, 16 shoehorned into each bedroom, uh, and dirty single bedrooms at that. Um, then they went on to Kilmainham in Dublin 8, unauthorised development again, um, bunk beds took up every single space that was, that was available and it was shut down eventually because of an unauthorised development but the owners and got, certainly got their money's worth out of the temporary occupiers at that stage uh, in the 30 to 40 uh, persons sharing that home. Again, then we had Rathmines with 23 women sharing a two-bedroomed house. These are all last year and the year before, Minister. They're not back in the, the days where we kind of shut up and put up with that because we didn't uh, expect, it. and it's not luxury, but we didn't expect, I suppose, our own space and that our own space is not luxury, it is acceptable and it's deemed absolutely healthy to have that. And if I'm paying money or my child is paying money for accommodation, I expect the standards to be maintain maintained. Many times over, the standards that have been, when the inspection has happened, the standards have been, have been clear. And I mean, how clear can you get when the report says it is immediate danger to the welfare and the safety of tenants in the building? Uh, you look on the DAFs or the Facebooks or the spotterhome.com and you see flagrant uh, abuses um, of advertising standards, I suppose. What it says in the tin is what, oh, what you get inside. Uh, what you get inside is um, stuffy, unhealthy, mouldy, damp, uh, small spaces where you're meant to sleep, eat and, and live. Uh, we won't accept that anymore. There are unfit rental properties going around this city and people are making a fortune out of them. They are running around unfeathered and enjoying their, the ill-gotten Ill gains um, across the rental sector in the various apartments or homes. There's multiple breaches of fire safety, never mind the overcrowding, no escape routes or fire alarms. Uh, I understand the council with the HAP and the rent, any rent allowance or rent supports do endeavour to try and inspect homes for fire uh, or breaches of other safety, rat inf infestation, etc. But they're overwhelmed. Only 4% last year were actually inspected, Minister. And out of that 4%, miserly 4% that we could get to, 70% were found absolutely failing to meet the standards set 
for the payment of public monies to landlords for HAP and other rental supports. Minister, the resources in the, in the Council have been cut to the bone. Um, I don't blame the councils in that they don't have the resources. We need to uh, bolster those resources because the situation is becoming progressively worse. We're trying to play catch up all the time, but uh, unscrupulous landlords have ways and means of going under the radar and some other property or the same property uh, arises back on the same advertising space but with just a different slant on it and a different perhaps uh, number on the door, different things that they can get away with um, to, to dupe people into thinking that they're getting a, a reasonable accommodation. Uh, uh, people are looking for reasonable, they're not looking for top end uh, luxury obviously, but we need more resources and, and, and more willpower for the enforcement of the regulation and of this regulation when this legislation to see the amendment to see that the advertisements will be called out and uh, uh, ba uh, effectively banned. So, Minister, I, I guess, for, for as being a Dubliner, um, it seems to be prolific around. I remember going up uh, daft.ie and seeing a shed. And at that shed, there was a, an, a woman that came to me, she showed it to me. She was, uh, uh, you know, mildly intellectually disabled, and she rented it at €800 Euros a, a month. And then when she explained to me why she was so sick all the time, because she had to go to the main house to get toilet facilities, bathroom facilities, water and cooking facilities, and this had slept, slept through the net. And trying to make a complaint to get somebody to do something about it, it, it was quite impossible because a lot of people were going, well, I'll take it because of the desperation in, in, in the whole rental market. So not only have you got completely and utterly unsuitable and unscrupulous landlords. One you minute. have the competition of desperate people trying to find somewhere to live. That desperation as well, and I want to say on behalf, I suppose, of Rose Conway Walsh, and she said, will you bring up student accommodation and uh, the rural families paying way over the odds for substandard accommodation and letting their little ones um, travel to the, the big smoke and try and live a life, but the accommodation is detrimental to them and their health and I suppose first time away from home. You want comfort, we all want home comforts and we all deserve it, especially when you're paying or what you think you are paying for it. So, so Minister, I can't see why you would be so meany to kind of block this or delay this legislation. It makes sense. It's taken years to get here and again I commend Senator Warfield for putting this down for discussion. Gormagoth. Thank you, Senator Coffey.